What is up, everybody? How are we doing today? Um, I'm looking across the board at the markets here, and uh, it is a let's just call this an interesting start to the week. Uh, we have a lot to get to on this show. We we were, we we were on a two week hiatus with Jim Cagnita from Ninja Trader, but we're back now talking futures. We have a lot to digest. We have to recap. Really, I, I want Jim's take on what happened last week, especially really the back half of last week after the, the minutes came out from the Fed on uh, Thursday and Friday. But we're going to talk about this week or today and then going forward here, what to watch for this week. Uh, we're going to run through all the markets, the S&P, the NASDAQ, uh, the Dow, uh, Bitcoin, oil. We'll take questions from from the chat as always. So uh, go ahead and hit that like button and uh, let us, let's start futures trading with ninja trader and i cannot do this alone so let's bring on mr jim cagnina from ninja trader jim uh it's been a it's been a long time how how was your New Year's? Your Christmas is your is your twenty 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 two off to a good start. So well, as of today, yes. As, as of today, yes. <laughs> New Year's and you know Christmas. Christmas was great. New Year's was a little rocky. I did get the I did get the Omicron uh, virus, so I was a little bit under the weather for a few days. But I'm back and ready to go. All right. It's good. as I said before. It's good that you came out the other side. It's probably better to uh to had to just have it and get it over with at, at this point because it seems like. Seems like uh, we're all getting it. Though interestingly, the market doesn't seem interested in that, and we'll, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the market, I think, is interested here in um, in one thing. There are two things probably: uh, the Fed and inflation, and that'll be our theme of the day here. So, if we can, Jim, let's bring up your charts here on the screen. Uh, if you could share those with us, and uh, let's take a look. See, I guess we're going to start with the S and P five hundred futures, right? Yes, sir. Let's do it. What are we seeing out here? This is a daily chart, a daily candle chart. Oh. And, you know, you can see I pretty much I'm showing October through the present. And, you know, we had a really nice rally coming in all the way through, uh, well, when the Fed minutes came out. <laughs> then yeah. all hell broke loose, it looks like, uh, after that. And we've been selling off ever since nonstop. And I think that's what we're seeing right here. Um, but, you know, interestingly enough, as doom and, as doom and gloom as this looks, we're still pretty far, you know, we haven't lost everything we gained in December. We're, 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 we're driving toward that, yeah, but right. we're not there yet. So we'll see what happens. I have a key fib level there that I've kind of uh, painted on the screen and it, it looks like we're going to close below this. I wasn't so sure this morning, but it looks like we're definitely going to close below this. Again, my opinion, it's a long day. A lot of stuff could happen, uh, but this is looking pretty negative after those, uh, after the Fed minutes were released. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I really would love to get like your uh, take on on that move last week. Is you know watching it happen in real time. Um, I, first off, I mean, I don't know about you, Jim, but I can probably count on one hand the number of times where the Fed minutes really mattered like like that, right? Um, the, the whole the whole process is convoluted. It's 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 new news, but it's not new news because it was what they discussed a month ago. But now we're going to get more and more insight and and comparing what they're saying in the minutes versus what was said in the press conference. Anyway, we saw the market react. Obviously, the market was very caught off guard by what was in those minutes. I think specifically the part about um, when the Fed would consider actually unwinding their balance sheet and and selling all the bonds that they've acquired for the past uh two years um but i would just like your take on on just that the just the overall reaction to it because it was it, it was a it was a it was a big one yeah and i was as surprised as anybody i mean yeah. you know they even in the meetings the fed has this process where they they have a lot of weasel words going on you know we could change our mind we could taper faster we right. could you know so the, every meeting ends with that and so you know that this possibility exists right you know but this possibility exists but and then the other thing that another reason why it was surprising is there's no longer this uh silent fed between meetings right it's constant press conferences 
all, you know, FOMC members are running around the country making speeches and coming up with, and that didn't used to happen as early as 1919, uh, 2019, that didn't happen. And now it's constant set of information. So that added to my surprise when we saw, when, when we, when we, saw, we see the formation that we see on the chart right now. All right. So what does this chart say to you? How are you feeling? Uh, what, what levels or setups do you have here on, on the S&P 500? here well right now for i'm um, you know bearish in this market obviously uh today tomorrow right now right this second um you know we have a couple things coming up this week which might start 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 stabilizing it a little bit um but right now it looks like there's there's a paradigm shift going on here there's probably some juggling from uh, 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 a growth to value, uh, away from tech to financials and those kind of things. And I think that, I think that er, there is this balancing effect that we're also going to see here as well. Um, I think that there's a lot of cash out there still though. So that, the, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't really see a total fall apart of this market, but, okay. um, right now I would not be looking for places to buy. I'd be waiting. Okay. Um, Let's move on to where the uh, the real damage is today, which is uh, the same place it always is in technology in the NASDAQ 100 uh, futures down two and a half percent today. This is where this is where the core of the pain is the most of the pain. Yeah, this looks much more gnarly. I'll use the word gnarly as my technical term of the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, look at it, one, two, three, four, five pretty decent red uh, red bars, daily bars coming down here, way past the 61.8%. Uh, I do feel like we're going to go ahead and close below this thing. Um, and I don't see this thing turning around anytime soon until we get closer down to that that uh, where the where the whole thing started back in October. So I think there's more downside in this particular market, and I think we're hearing that on TV and everywhere else that you know the tech sector is going to take it uh, take the hardest, uh, especially as uh, the long term uh, yield uh, uh, part of the yield curve is yeah. steepening. Yeah. So I guess one thing I, I, and I should have asked this before on the last chart, but like, do you, maybe I should have started off with this, but Jim, do, do we have any active trades on right now? Uh, no, uh, I, we don't have any active trades on right now. We're, we're waiting to try to you know find if there's going to be an area of support, where's it going to be? Um, we haven't seen that yet. And until that happens, uh, looking, for, you know, keep looking for places to sell. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're, you know, you, you said you've got a short bias here. Obviously, the whole market has a short bias. Um, do you want to look at like the rest of the 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 other equities, like the like the the the, the Dow Jones, uh, Jim? Like an hour ago, or less than that, forty five minutes ago, it was was uh, it was ha it was outperforming relative. I felt like it seemed like it was showing some relative strength, but that is not the case now. So like, if you can't hide in the in the in the in the Dow Jones, which is like you know safe, stodgy stocks like like industrials and and where can you hide? But I mean, I, I don't know if you want to look at the Russell or the Dow next, but I mean, it's it's it we're down everywhere. Yeah, I just popped the I just popped the Dow up right now, and it's funny. It's almost as if me and you caused this to happen because it wasn't that bad when we started talking. Uh, you know, it, it was the strongest stock index future of the three that we're looking at. Um, and for, for, for reasons that you just suggested, I, you know, we would even be up above my, uh, my support line right here and I'll draw my crosshairs right across it so you can see it at 875. Um, and you know, we start, you know, and you started talking and everything broke, broke down again. So this, this is a universal phenomenon we're seeing across all the stock index futures. Yeah. And I think we saw that in Europe yesterday, last night. Um, there's, uh, uh, the appetite for equities right now is, is, is being adjusted. You know, the VIX is over 22 last time I looked. Um, so there's a lot of volatility. So the idea that, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and buy a low right now, be careful with that. It's just a lot of volatility right now. The dust will settle and you'll have your opportunity. So where are you getting all these levels from on, on all of these charts? So, I mean, I, the, the levels are, are this, this, this chart right here is an example. You know, I have uh, just a simple 20 day moving average. Let me take my crosshairs off. Um, I have a Fibonacci line that I drew a uh, long time ago uh, from low to high. Uh, this is basically the beginning of December low to our recent high in January. And uh, so that, that's how I drew those lines. Uh, this area here, what I identified as, it used to be an area of resistance 
And when, when you extend these areas of resistance, you know, we have we didn't close over over 86 for you know one, two, three, four, five, six, several days in a row. Then we broke through strongly. A lot of times these areas uh, of resistance become areas of support. And so I track that over a period of time. And I'm saying, hey, this is an area of support. Well, clearly it's not an area of support anymore. <laughs> we're, we're crashing through it right now. So that's that's a kind of a manual uh, line I drew just based on my uh, experience. And then I just have a MACD at the bottom, just tracking momentum. And clearly the momentum is uh, negative. The slope of the histogram bars are pretty weak. And we're about to cross under zero uh, potentially right now as well. So that's telling me again, uh, you know, we're not looking for areas to buy right now. Uh, maybe if you want to day trade, looking for areas to sell. All right, can you, let's just run through the other markets here quickly, and, and, and then we'll spend some more time talking about the rest of this week. But we, we still have to look at oil. We still have to look at crypto. So let's just run through the rest. Of All this right, week. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go left to right. I got gold right here. Uh, gold futures right here in my chart. We, you know, we're right at the 20 day uh, moving average. And you know, surprisingly, this market's been relatively muted uh, in relationship to all the other ones. And again, I have my same Fibonacci line. I have drawn high to low. Uh, we retraced really nicely back up to the 61.8% uh, FIB number and then kind of broke back down right now. Again, we're having a real hard time uh, maintaining above that 1800 level. We talked about it last year and we're going to talk about it this year as well. So right now I'm kind of I'm sideways in gold. I think there's opportunities to buy or sell from a day trade point of view, um, but I would definitely respect the FIB lines in the day chart, daily chart uh, as you transition into your... Uh, into your, uh, uh, you know, smaller intraday chart. All right, that's gold. Gold, 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 which has been <laughs> such a laggard, but I guess today it looks okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you talk about, you know, you know, a risk asset or flight to quality or a or, or value type of uh, asset, this hasn't reacted the way that a lot of folks suggested it should. You know, the television commercials on TV are wrong. <laughs> it's, it's It's been kind of a sideways investment product for a long time. Wait, what? The overnight, the 3 a.m. commercials on TV are wrong <laughs> about gold? <laughs> buy, buy gold coins? Those aren't right? Well, you know, I, I haven't bought, I, I, I didn't go online and I haven't I haven't purchased my gold bullion yet, but uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wait. Okay. Anyway. All right. Crude oil's next. Crude oil... Well, um, you know, this is we're in a bear bear mode right here. It's pretty strong. I think the forces uh, uh, in the world are pretty uh, a pretty a pretty committed to keeping prices uh, in the mid to upper 70s. I think that's where we're at right now. This is this is WTI West Texas Intermediary uh, crude right now, and um, it's you know, uh, Omicron is was a factor for a day, and that was it. And uh, uh, world life is go is is going forward. You know my my plane ride jam packed, airport jam packed. Mm. Um, you know I don't have stats on the airline industry, but things are moving. You know people are traveling, people are doing things. Um, so there's a so demand is is pretty uh pretty pretty high there at least from a retail point of view. I, I know Jim, but Jim, I, I would love your take here because like oil is already run. You know, to some I, I get that it's off its high from uh, last week a little bit, but like. It, we've already had this this run in, in oil here, uh, so I don't know how would you approach it going forward. Well, right now, you know, I'm looking at this. You know, I have a kind of a really crude trend line up here, right here, from a day trade point of view. Again, I'd be looking for places to buy. Um, I still think there's upside in this market. I think we can get, you know, there, we have a double top up here around 83, 84. Um, I think that's a good target, um, and I think we could we're going to move up toward that levels as we go forward here. So again, looking for places to buy crude, not looking for places to sell. And, and you'd be buying on dips. So do we yeah. do we have a level here? Maybe well, not. I'm looking at a day from a day trade point of view. I'd have to look at a 10 minute chart. So, but you know, we're right. We we do have a level in that. Um, if once we start closing below my trend line, then I'm going to be a little bit less bullish, right? The more we close below it, the more less bullish I become. But right now, we're not there yet. So, um, I would be patient and see what happens when this bar completes itself. What what price would that be at? Just uh, think on, uh, throw the yeah, right here. I mean, as of as we speak, you know, we're seventy eight sixty, seventy eight fifty eight. Um, but remember, we want to see the next bar. Uh, the line slopes upward, so the next bar, you know, we're gonna it's gonna be even at a higher price. So hopefully, we'll end up in the seventy nines, if not higher, uh, by the end of the day. 
And can we look at Bitcoin here? Yes, sir. Yes, please. This this thing got below forty thousand dollars <laughs> this morning. Did bounce off that low, but uh, it's been a, a as bad a day as it's been for stocks. It's been a worse day for crypto. Yeah, I you know I, I, I'm I'm not surprised uh, to be honest with you. Um, I think that uh, money is flowing in different directions right now, and I'm not so sure that uh, uh, Bitcoin is a risk on asset this second. And I think folks are, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it bounces bounces back strong and uh, uh, completes its tear up to seventy thousand again. But from the futures point of view, um, this is looking very bearish in this chart. Is there anything you do like? I guess you said you like oil, so that's something. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> well, don't forget, we have the ability to express our our opinions long or short in futures trading. So yeah. even a even a red red bar after red bar after red bar gives us the ability to find places to sell and hopefully do well. So so now let's now that we've run through all the markets here, can we look at like the rest of the week here, Jim? And like, w there are a couple of big macro events that you and I were talking about before we, we hopped on here that sh could and should impact things. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, again, we have this, we have uh, the Powell hearing tomorrow. Um, and I expect uh, uh, Chairman Powell will be grilled as he usually is. I think it's the Senate hearing is, tomorrow at uh 10 o'clock and you know he will he's got a script of course but he's he will have to answer questions off the cuff and that will also give us some additional information on what the fed's thinking about and with this highlight on the equity markets getting uh being whacked right now uh it's going to be particularly sensitive so tomorrow for sure uh you know if you're trading into that hearing be careful make sure you're every stop losses and be aware that this is happening and that he might say something that could jar things up a little bit. That's kind of number number one. Uh, number two is, uh, is, is Wednesday's uh, CPI number um, that's, uh, that's coming out as well. You, you can make a case, and I've said this before, the CPI, um, in terms of just um, importance for the stock market, is probably more important than the jobs number. The jobs number was has always been like the most uh, watched um, economic data point. But I think you could say, aside from you know interest rates, but I, I think you could say right now that that CPI, maybe even PPI, is more important just because we're in this inflationary environment. We haven't seen this much inflation in so long. Um, I think you could say CPI is probably going to have um, a more more of an effect on the market than the jobs number did last Friday. I I agree with you on this. I mean, I agree with you on this. I think all eyes are on it. I think it's, you know, one of the main gauges that folks like to look at. Yep. It's uh, over, I mean, during our, our bull run since, I don't know, 2008, it's kind of taken a back seat. Um, but I don't know. Not anymore. I mean, I have a picture of a, of a bond chart up here right now. Oh, yeah. Let, let, let's, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's look at bonds because bonds did some crazy stuff last week. Yeah, and, and and this is this is the thirty-year Treasury bond that I'm showing here right now. So yeah. it represents the longer end of the yield curve, yep. and um, you know we've been uh, just prices have been breaking pretty much nonstop. And if I, you know I'm going to put my crosshairs up to the start of this thing, January twentieth. So it kind of predated all of the excitement we're seeing recently in the equity markets. And you know bonds, I always I have always said this, the 30 year treasury bond market's a little bit smarter than every every, every other market and does tend to move ahead of time. It t does tend to move first and I think we're seeing that uh, here, but the trend is clearly down right now. Um, we've had CPI numbers that have uh, really whacked this uh, uh, treasury bond uh, prices more than a handle. One, two, I've seen a three handle move on a CPI back in the day, and I expect some uh, similar type of behavior coming on Wednesday. Real quick, what is a handle? A point, I'm sorry. So, um, you know, one, if you look on the right, 160 to 161, that's one point. This particular market is traded in 30 seconds. So there's, so that there's 32 ticks in a point and each point or handle is worth a thousand dollars per contract in the futures market. Yeah. I, I, and I said this this morning as well, but last week, if, if you look at just t total return 
Um, last week was the worst week for the 30 year uh, uh, bond market in like 49 years. Worst week, worst week for the 10 year note in 42 years. It was, it was a wild week. And then, and, and the prevailing wisdom is that the bond market is the leading indicator more than the stock market. Stock market is a lagging indicator. Um, you know, if you follow that wisdom, then then it, it would seem to mean that this week, the, the weakness we've seen this morning is is not by accident and it's um could be a sign of more things to come if if, if the stock market follows the bond market. So um yeah pretty interesting. Um so so Jim staying on bonds for a second here, how do we like I don't know if you have a level, but how, how do we trade the bond market right here going forward? Yeah, well, so for this particular part of the uh, part of you know U.S. Treasury debt, the longer term, uh, longer term futures, and I'm looking for places to sell. And you know, we broke our bot. We we had a kind of a double bottom here, if you want to consider that in October uh, and through at the end of October, we broke through that. Our trend is, is very, very strong. So, you know, again, I'm looking for places to sell on, a, you know, for, an, for a day trade, for an intraday uh, trade. And the one thing that's kind of interesting about a day trading, uh, the treasury bonds, is they have a lot of movement pre-market. So, and I'll use East Coast time. Uh, if you're up at seven o'clock in the morning, uh, and uh, you're looking at a treasury bond market, that pre-market, and I'm talking, you know, I'm referring to the equity pre-market, um, there's a lot of opportunities in treasury bonds. So a lot of times the move happens then, and it's good to be, you know, early bird gets to worm, good to be prepared. But again, looking for places to sell uh, right now, this particular market. Okay. All right. So uh, if we, it's 1051. We've got nine minutes left in today's show. Uh, if you have any questions about futures, uh, or any futures market or futures in general, now is the time. Ask away. Uh, Jim, do we want to go into your uh, tip of the week here? Yes, sir. All right, let's 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 go into that right now. This is Jim's <clears throat> trading tip of the week. What do we got? We already touched on it, but tip of the week, Wednesday, in Consumer Price Index, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, you know, 8.30 a.m. is coming out, you know, pre-market on the East Coast on the 12th. Uh, I got the wrong date on there. Sorry. Oh, no, no. It's for December uh, 2020. This is for last month's data, right? right? right. Uh, and the consensus is 0.4% uh, month over month and 7.1% uh, uh, year over year. X food and energy, 5.4%. Uh, year over year. So this is kind of the consensus, right? This is what uh, the economists on average agree. This is what they expect to happen. Uh, we'll see. I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'm I'm on the over here on this one. The over meaning you're expecting a, a bigger, a, 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 well, worse, I think, or a higher number, which would mean more inflation than the market is expecting. Yeah, I do. Uh, but then again, you know, the CPA, you know, it's been the consensus folks have been pretty good, but not always. Every once in a while, they miss it by a little bit. So 71, 7.1% to me sounds like maybe it's a little bit optimistic. So what do we think, Jim, as far as how the market would react? Like, let's say if 7.1% is your consensus estimate um, and, and that's that's annual 0.4% is month over month. Um, let's say we get like a number that's like 6% year over year. I don't know, 0.3% month over month. I'm, I'm just making those numbers up. But like, let's say we come in lighter. Um, then the market is sort of reassessing, well, what does what does lower inflation mean for the Fed? What does that in turn mean for the market? How do we think the market reacts to a lighter inflation number? So I, th I think this is all about what pressure is going to be put on the Fed uh, with respect to interest rate hikes and then tapering, whether tapering is in the form of uh, passive, uh, uh, you know, passive duration expiration or active selling. And I think these kind of numbers put pressure on them. Uh, to 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 behave a certain way, so I, that's that's what that's that's how I look at this particular number. Okay, and uh, likewise, a, a a higher number, let's say eight percent a year, would it, it's one of those things where like you, you sort of have to. 
to like think about this bad news is this bad news good news and vice versa but eight percent would be definitely be considered quote unquote bad news right yeah. higher inflation yeah. uh bad news for like the world bad news well not so much the world. bad news for for consumers right um do we think that translates though to the markets Yes, I think it, it freaks. I think it's going to <laughs> another technical phrase I'll use. Freak everybody out. Yeah. You know, I think I think you're going to see you're going to see more. You're going to see some selling now. We've 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 a lot of times, especially I don't know how many times I've seen this phenomenon where uh, I have expected. Oh, you know, if if consent year over year is 5.0, this is good. Market's going to rally. I don't know how many times I've seen the opposite happen where I'm like, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. Um, but in this particular case, I think uh, I think it, I think it at least initially moved things. The rest of the report needs to be analyzed and discussed for sure. But the mm -hmm. consensus number is going to is going to move stuff in the direction we think. Okay, uh, there was a question earlier on the chat about natty gas. If, if we can look at that for for a second here, Jim. Nat gas. I'll have to do some chart manipulation here, but yeah, let's just do that. Ng. Let's see. Right. Oh, I got. Let me sync everything, everybody. Hang on a second. I'm going to sync it to the orange, and there we have. Uh, there's a there's a there's a daily nat gas chart right there. Mm -hmm. You know, not too bad. You know, you know, we're we're Midwest is getting crushed on the temperature. That's for sure. Oh, uh, is it cold out of here, Jim? You don't even know. <laughs> yeah, so we're seeing a little bit of price uh, price uh, inflation, a little bit of price lift right now, but things are settling back down here. Uh, with respect to where prices were, you know, over over 640, now we're down to now we're back down to, I'm going to say reality, kind of almost normal range. Okay. Any other questions for Jim Joffman? We got a couple of minutes left, um, so we've, we, we've basically covered all of it. And 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 even though um, so, sometimes you know w w when I'm on stream, Jim, I, I you know I'll make an observation and. Over the course of that stream, my observation, you know, the market will turn on that. But um, we've basically not put up much of a fight so far today. We just made a new low for the day in the S&P futures, like just a few minutes, just a few seconds ago, actually, looks like. So um, we're continuing to leak throughout the throughout the, uh, the last half hour. Yeah, the bottom's not in yet. Best advice is be patient. We'll, we'll get to a point where we start developing uh, support. There'll be a point when we start developing support. Remember, there's a lot of there's a lot of idle cash out there. There's a lot of folks looking for bargains. There's a lot of institutions looking for bargains. So we'll we'll, we'll get there. Whether or not we're going to get there between you know in the next couple of minutes, it doesn't look good. You're right. ES down 89, NQ down almost 400, uh, Russell 2000 down 40, uh, Dow Jones down 525, you know 530 almost. That's 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 a lot of a uh, lot a lot of red. Do you have, I mean, I, I think we've already asked this, but like, at what point would you, like, what, what would be your, your point of, I don't know, support, your point of maybe I want to come in and take a flyer on the long side. Do you have that? Does it exist? So what I want to see here, here's a daily candle. And you see how we're trading toward the bottom of the candle. Um, what would be nice to see at a certain, by the end of the day, is this wick at the bottom of the candle being a little bit bigger than it is right now? The let the smaller the wick today, in my opinion, uh, the more chances of continue continuation selling tomorrow. So I'm going to keep my eye on that on that bottom wick of that red candle for all the stock index futures, and uh, uh, if we can close with a decent size uh, wick on the bottom. Then um, I'm, I'm gonna. I feel like maybe momentum is gonna slow down a little bit tomorrow. All right. I mean, it, it's, it, momentum is only sped up in the last few minutes here, so it's just one of those days. But uh, yeah. All right, uh, guys. We we do this show once a week with Jim Cagnina from uh, Ninja Trader. I highly recommend you check out the links that have been on the uh, scrolling ticker this whole time. The links that have, that are in the uh, description of this video. Um, ninjatrader.com slash platform training, uh, ninjatrader.com slash futures, and ninjatrader.com slash getting started. Uh, you can uh, see more from uh, Jim's webinars there and learn more about futures trading and ninjatrader and the platform on those links. Jim, any final thoughts for us here? 
Uh, not, not really. Um, you know, just again, be mindful of the testimony tomorrow. Be mindful of Wednesday, um, and uh, you know, have your stops in, best trade practices, and uh, good luck. All right, I, we will definitely have to check in with you uh, later in the week and see, you know, if this market can turn at all or what. But uh, yeah, very uh, <laughs> one directional day out there. Uh, Jim Cagnina. Always a pleasure, sir. Um, and uh, again, he's a senior education and training specialist for the Ninja Trader platform. Jim, um, have a great rest of your week. Uh, let us know if you take any shorts. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Spencer. All right, that'll be a wrap here. Everyone, go ahead and hit that like button for me. I'd appreciate that. We got Benzinga live coming up in a half hour. So I'll see you guys over there, myself and AB. And uh, yeah, I guess just... Stay green, whether it's whether it's sitting on your hands, whether it's taking shorts, whatever. Do what you got to do. But uh, pretty one, dire- one directional day, though. Uh, Moderna's having a good day. Humana's having to bounce. So there are things that are up, but um, most of the stock's not. Anyway, catch you guys in a half hour. Everyone, stay green and stay healthy. <laughs>